now Sky, yeah. when we touched the local government minister <clears throat> versus the um, DSCF boss story on Monday, mm -hmm. it was only one newspaper that had it. Mm -hmm. Today, it's in almost all the papers. And today's Wednesday. So I actually thought the story was going down. It's actually going up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so if you look in the trends, mm -hmm. it's a big story. Mm -hmm. um, well, initially, my sense was that the minister is the one who's in charge of strategy for local government. So the DACF boss <coughs> has to find a way to work with the minister. Mm -hmm. All right? That position hasn't changed that much. But when I listened to the MPs yesterday, I listened to a couple of MPs from the committee who sort of well, they were defending the DACF boss. This is I speak to on the side seem to think the minister is right, but I, I, I'm not at liberty to mention their names, right? So I, I am seeing some sort of division. I think the DC is, at least the ones I've spoken to, are with their minister. But I think a lot of the MPs on the committee think that the DACF boss is not, hasn't done anything wrong. And I think some of them feel like the way she's going about it is the way things should be done, right? You've gone into the law to sort of try and reconcile things because I think there were two discussions. There was the Consolidated Act 936, mm -hmm. which subsumed the original DACF law into the District Assembly's local government law, yeah. and then the Constitution as well, and some 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 issues. So, <clears throat> where are you on this? What's what's the what's the way out? Because the presidency too hasn't come out to say <laughs> this person is right or this whatever they do, they do it behind mm -hmm. the scenes. But what I am told from my sources is that the DCs are not happy because they feel like a lot of the discretion being exercised from the administration procures some items at source and then distributes to them. So the effective amount they get, the effective amount they get to do their development is much lower than they would expect. Now, I'm not sure if it's an efficiency point that the uh, DACF is using to do those procurements. But that's the, the feedback I'm getting that, look, if, for example, I'm expecting 800,000 for this quarter, maybe I get 250,000 because some of the things I'll probably purchase have been purchased. And 250K can't do much. You can't even build a three-unit classroom block. So all the DCs feel like they don't have the financial wherewithal to really do what they have to do based on some of the points I've had. I stand to be corrected, right? The MPs, on the other hand, feel like <coughs> The, the discretion in choosing this, this deprived district for specific projects that the DACF administrator is exercising can even benefit non-MPP districts in a sense, for whatever reason. So some of them believe that she hasn't done anything wrong. She should be left alone to do what she's going to do. I'll speak to a committee member again this morning, but I just want you to, to sort of reconcile the issue, because don't forget yesterday when we were having a discussion about the BOG, mm. you said when two laws meet, the higher law wins, mm -hmm. all right? So I pointed out the Banking Act and you said the Constitution is higher than that. No problem. So when you take the Constitution and then you take the Act and then you take other laws, are they saying the same thing? Do they provide clarity on what is happening? Yeah, thank you, Bernard. Uh, let me just say quickly that in dealing with this matter, um, those who are minded uh, can look at Article 252 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. which sets up the District Assembly's Common Fund mm -hmm. and makes it clear that at least 5% of our revenues collected annually mm -hmm. will go into a dedicated fund, mm -hmm. which will be shared to the various District Assemblies mm -hmm. around the country. Now, in implementing the provisions of the Constitution under Article 252 of of, of, of the Constitution. Mm. Parliament passed what was previously the District Assembly's Common Fund Act, mm -hmm. which has now been subsumed under the Local Governance Act of 2016, which is Act 936. Now, in that act, it is not to amend the previous position. Basically, the idea was to just consolidate the previous act which I mentioned, the Debt Assembly Common Fund Act, mm -hmm. to consolidate it so that they can bring all the various components of things happening within the local government sector mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. so that there's one go-to you know, legislation that you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. But what has to be stated that 
is that if you look at the provisions of the act, the framers of the law were simply giving effect to what appears to be the legislative intent of those who frame the constitution. Because if you look at the provisions of the constitution, mm -hmm. it would seem that the framers wanted to create a separate entity provided with resources to further the whole agenda of decentralization and development at the local level. Mm. So you would have the fact that when the Minister for Finance goes to Parliament, he will give you the budget for the local government ministry, right? The, the budget for uh, roads, trade, and all these ministries. However, outside these budgets, there's a dedicated fund created, mm -hmm. which is to facilitate development at the local level. Okay. And that is the District Assembly's Common Fund. Uh -huh. Now... The person who is chosen to police how the funds are used, mm -hmm. according to the constitution, that person is appointed by the president mm. in consultation with the council of state, but with what? Prior approval from parliament. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you something. It would seem that the premise of the constitution attached so much importance to the person occupying that office, that they require that the president, before appointing the person, there must be consultation with the Council of State, and then there must be prior approval. You understand? And the person is given four-year term that is renewable, subject to the person performing properly. So, and, and the, the Constitution also makes it clear that you cannot, you know, direct how things happen at the local level in a way that impacts negatively what the framers intended. And, and, and you can go to uh, Article 254 of the Constitution, which says, Parliament shall enact laws and make st take steps necessary for further decentralization of the administrative functions and projects of central government, but shall not exercise any control over the district assemblies that is incompatible with the decentralized status or otherwise contrary to law. Now, let's get back to the issues at play. If you look at the minister's letter to the president, the minister suggests that for some reason, Nat or she, who is the current... Um, this is Assembly Common Fund Minister. Exactly. It's not cooperating with her in how the it's formula not, not is not formulated. consulted or he uses three words. There's no consultation. There's no... Uh, she's, he's not aware... And it's not engaged. Those okay. are the three words you use. Uh -huh. So like things are done without consulting, mm -hmm. engaging, mm -hmm. or even I use that's the third word, informing. Mm -hmm. And then he quotes section one two six three of the same act to support why he believes that um, he has a role in this matter. Bernard, but as you know, let me let me just distinguish the law for you with the greatest respect to the best of my understanding. If you go to article one two, the section one two nine of the local governments act. Mm. The Local Governance Act. Mm. The Act states, and with your permission, let me quote. It deals with functions of the administrator. It says that the administrator shall a propose a formula annually for the distribution of the common fund for approval by Parliament. So it is the function of the administrator to propose the formula to Parliament, and Parliament's job is to scrutinize the formula and then pass it when they believe that it has to be passed. Mm. Then B, administer and distribute monies paid into the mm. common fund mm. among the district assemblies in accordance with the formula approved by parliament. So when the, 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 the administrator takes the document to parliament and parliament looks at it and its own wisdom, in its own wisdom says that, okay, we are happy with this. It is the job or the function of the administrator to work in alignment with what Parliament mm. has ordered. And C says, report in writing to Parliament on how allocations made from the Common Fund to the District Assemblies have been utilized by the District Assemblies. In other words, this is a monitoring function. Your job, after having disbursed the funds, is to make sure that you go and police what's happening. Find out. How are they using the funds? Are they using it according to what has been proposed by Parliament mm -hmm. or approved by Parliament? 
and then submit a report to the house. Is there a role in there for the local government? Minister? I'll come to that. I, I want you to move. Uh, and then D, perform any other functions that may be directed by the president. So that basically is the function of the administrator of the fund. So now, what there's, is there's the, no recourse there to the minister. It would seem. It doesn't appear to be yeah, any. The facts speak for themselves. Mm. Now, if you go to the relevant section that deals with the minister, mm -hmm. this is um, section 126, clause 3. Of? Subsection 3, actually. It says, of, of the District Assembly's Common Fund Act. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? The Local Governance Act. 2016. Yeah. Now, section, uh, subsection 3 says, the minister shall, in consultation with the minister responsible for finance, and the minister, if you look at the definition section or interpretation section, minister. is the local government minister. With the minister responsible for finance, determining the category of expenditure of the approved budget. Now, I'd underline approved budget. And I told you earlier that the job of the local governor, uh, what do you call it, the mm -hmm. district assembly's common fund administrator, is to take the proposal to parliament. Parliament approves it. That budget, when approved, the money now goes to the district assemblies. And it is at that point that the minister of local government's authority is triggered. Mm -hmm. So the subsection says the minister shall, in consultation with the minister responsible for finance, mm. determine the category of expenditure of mm. the approved development budget of district assemblies that must in each year be met out of autonomous uh, amounts, actually, received by the district assemblies mm. from the district assemblies common fund. Mm -hmm. So the minister's authority regarding how the funds are used are only triggered when parliament has finished its job, mm -hmm. approved the budget, and it, the money is sent to the district assemblies. Mm -hmm. At that point, he now engages the minister responsible for finance on mm -hmm. how to use the funds. Mm -hmm. Now, Bernard, what is the dispute? I have done a lot of digging around this matter, and there appears to be a consensus around an attempt to stifle or perhaps interfere with this the, the, the constitutional independence of the administrator of the uh, District Assembly's Common Fund. Mm -hmm. It would seem, from the evidence submitted, that the minister wants to take a center <coughs> stage mm -hmm. or play a key role mm -hmm. in how the allocations are made. But Bernard, let's go back to what exactly the dispute is. The dispute is around an allocation made to the BIA East Member of Parliament, who is from the NDC stop. Was that and, the only dispute? No, there are a number of other issues. Yeah, so I don't think highlighting just that one. No, I'm, I'm There are a number of them, so no, it's not I'm, just one. I'm highlighting it for a reason, and I will come to that. The reason I'm highlighting is that the allocation in this case did not come from the overall budgetary allocation in the sense of what goes to the various district assemblies. It came out from the reserve fund, as I understand it. And the letters um, I, I, I point to that, that, that particular fact. The reserve fund has been created purposely as part of the formula. Mm -hmm. So that in the case of emergencies, mm -hmm. in that need situations where perhaps, you know, a, a member of parliament's constituency is hit by flood, as in, in, in the case with my constituency, the, the Ketu South constituency, flooding hit them recently. You, as a member of parliament, can engage with the district assembly's uh, common fund and say that, oh, this is a dire need situation. How much can you release from the uh, reserve fund to support the people of the Ketu South constituency? Mm. You understand? So it is an allocation that is there. Parliament has approved it. And it doesn't come under the control of the minister responsible for local government. Because as the, as the Speaker of Parliament explained in Parliament recently, the District Assembly's Common Fund does not come under the, ex, uh, the, the control or direction of the Minister for Local Government. But is the Minister <clears throat> saying he wants control? The understanding I have is that the Minister says mm. there must be collaboration. And the fact that his ministry is the coordinating ministry for local government policy, mm -hmm. there has to be... Uh, and the word again is not control. Mm -hmm. Is not direction, it's not supervision, mm -hmm. it's not boss servant. He's saying that I have to be part of what you are doing. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the, the standard practice has been. Let me read from the letter. Yes. The minister's letter to the president, which is dated the 10th. Just read of the relevant July, part, it's a long letter. Yes, I'm, I'm reading the. 
So, paragraph 5 says, annually, the administrator of the District Assembly's Common Fund proposes the formula for the distribution of the District <coughs> um, Assembly's Common Fund to the Parliament of Ghana. Once the approval is done, the administrator of the District Assembly's uh, Common Fund has the function under Section 129 of the Local Governors Act 2026 to administer and distribute monies paid into the Common mm. Fund among the District Assemblies in accordance with the formula approved by Parliament. Now, he goes on to say, Section 1263, which I quoted earlier, of the same act states, the minister shall in consultation... He's read that already. Exactly. Da, 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 da. Now then, paragraph 8, he says that what? Part of the approved formula location uh, are activities like one, national projects, special mm -hmm. uh, projects, mm -hmm. distress, district mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. reserve funds. Now, the ministry in paragraph 1, he argues, holds the view that when it comes to the above activities in the approved formula, the administrator of the District Assembly's Common Fund does not have the authority to determine the distribution unilaterally as it must sit within a broad strategic framework of government. Mm -hmm. Now, it goes on to say that as the supervisory ministry of the Local Government um, mm -hmm. Act mm -hmm. and the ministry responsible for coordinating the MMDAs, uh, we are of the view that the mandate to determine which districts receive such support and special attention lies with the ministry we are aware of, of the firm belief that the trigger for distribution should be initiated by the ministry. Mm, that's right? why you have a problem. That's right. On behalf of government, to ensure it sits within the broad government strategy. And you're saying the law the doesn't law give, doesn't that, give that, the that, minister that, that authority. Yeah. In any event, oh, yeah. this particular approval is approved for parliament, mm -hmm. by parliament, for a specific purpose, mm -hmm. to deal with emergencies. Mm. And it sits within the bosom of the administrator. Now, the minister, by this letter, is seeking to usurp that authority. And I'm saying that mm. with the greatest respect to the minister. If he goes back to read the two provisions in the Act, in tandem with the Constitution, clearly, he is overstepping his bounds. And, 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 mm. and he also suggests in this um, letter that for some reason consultations are not done with him. I've been speaking to members of the committee. I'm told that this dispute, the committee. the committee on local government, started sometime in 2021. And they have made attempts to deal with it. To, hoping to that, resolve it. To resolve it. But the situation has, I, you know, actually escalated. It's got Instead worse. of, you know, de-escalating. Mm, mm. Now... So they've not been able to solve the they've problem. They've not been able to solve the problem. So mm. in 2002... We're told that 22. upon 2022, forgive me, upon the uh, invitation of the ministry, the, the local government committee, the district assembly's common fund administrator wrote to the minister for local government. Now that letter is dated March the 8th, 2022, inviting his input into the formula to be presented to parliament. And let me read. Oh, you want quick. to go into all of that? Okay. Oh, I, I, I want you to summarize what the points are for me. Okay. I don't have, okay. Now, in this particular letter, Bernard, mm. the District Assembly's Common Fund Administrator invited the minister to make his input mm -hmm. because we're told that the lack of input was delaying mm -hmm. the approval. Mm -hmm. Now, when this letter went, it was not responded to because there was a date of, you know, if you go to paragraph four, we anticipate your response not later than 30th March 2022 mm -hmm. to enable us to expedite the process. Mm -hmm. We're told that the minister was not responding. Mm -hmm. And in his absence, a deputy minister mm -hmm. at the ministry, mm -hmm. the Honorable Collins in team, mm -hmm. wrote a response, mm -hmm. which response went to the District Assembly's Common Fund. Mm -hmm. And he proposed what, in his view, should be the input. Did he do it in consultation with his minister? No, you see, <clears throat> that's another matter. Because if you look at the constitution, the deputy minister cannot, strictly speaking, act on mm -hmm. his own. He must consult the minister. Mm -hmm. What we do not know it's, it's is whether he consulted the minister. Well, the letter was addressed to the minister, not yeah, the deputy. Yeah, that's right. What we do not know is whether yeah. he did so. so but so what he says, and, and yeah. with, with the greatest respect, on the letter, he says, for minister. All right. Now, on the face of it, Premier Fis here, you can argue that perhaps yeah, yeah. he did so in <coughs> consultation. Good. And with then the what happened after that? The minister, the Honorable Dambotri, subsequently wrote a letter on the 30th of March, 2022. Mm -hmm. This was what? The, the letter was dispatched uh, or was authored on the 28th of March in response to the earlier letter mm -hmm. from the District Assembly's Common Fund. 
And then on the 30th, he so wrote two days a letter. After. Yeah. And let me read. It says, can you refer to our letter dated blah, 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 on the, su- on the above subject matter? Please be informed that for administrative reasons, the letter and the reference is hereby withdrawn. Mm-hmm. In other words, the input that the deputy minister had sought to make for and on behalf of the minister mm-hmm. was being withdrawn. In other words, they did not have to make any... Are you, is it right for you for the deputy minister to respond to a letter when the minister is still alive? The question that you should... No, no, Bernard, I will, I will, I will come to that. The question is, you can, can you determine whether indeed there was a consultation? If you cannot, the minister... But once the minister has written two days after withdrawing the letter, clearly there wasn't. Well, it's another matter. It's, the, but, it's a simple matter. Because if, if somebody's written a letter on the 28th mm-hmm. to respond to a letter written to me, your boss, mm-hmm. and I write to this letter and say, I'm withdrawing that letter, clearly there's a problem. There are dep- deeper issues beyond um, just suggesting that because it's been withdrawn. So what's the committee no saying about this? I, I will come to that. Mm-hmm. Now, as recent as um, 2023, um, March 3, 2023, Mm. My information from the committee is that, again, the administrator wrote to the minister okay. inviting his input into the 2020 This year's formula. formula. And then the this formula, letter went... Some Pythagoras said no, they come. <laughs> <laughs> this letter went... Like NSMQ for add this formula to the <laughs> problem of the day. <laughs> this letter went, I am told, <laughs> by members of the committee. Formula. And... The minister has still today not responded, not responded to it. Mm. Now, Has the committee called the minister to come and answer questions or to appear before it? Now, let me just tell you about what was happening previously. Mm. My understanding is mm. that previous ministers enjoyed a lot of working relationship with the occupants of the administrator's office. Mm. Now, the Honorable Dambotre is a former chief whip in parliament. The Honorable Natoshi Ado was in Parliament previously. In fact, they came to Parliament the same year in 2000 and uh, uh, forgotten. Yeah. And they served on the majority front bench yeah. together. Yeah. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, What's why, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Yeah, and issues. the people tell us that, look, Haji Ali Mahama, when she was there as local government minister, they did not have this problem. In fact, Honorable Minister would You go, made this point two days ago. That the fact the woman has been there since 2018 or mm-hmm. so, and that this is the only minister having a problem. Yeah, and I'm saying that that is, you know, that that could be true, but it could, it could also be a coincidence, in the sense that maybe her conduct in the first term is not the same as her conduct this year, or his no. understanding of her role is, is different, different from, from the previous minister. Mm-hmm. So it's both. So I'm, yeah. I'm saying that it's, it's possible it could be that mm-hmm. or the other. Okay. So I don't want you to nail it on the minister. I'm not nailing. I'm just telling you the picture. I'm just painting a picture for yes, you. Yes, I am. But if you invite me to leave that path, I will leave that path. Yes. But let me add something else. Yes. Now, I read to you the role of the administrator when it comes to monitoring. Yeah, yeah. The administrator wrote a letter. Which letter is dated the 25th day of April 2023? Mm-hmm. Now, no, 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 not that one. Uh, this, uh, this was. Uh, let me, let me get to that yeah. particular letter. So that letter, mm-hmm. yes, this is by the the administrator. It's dated the tenth, uh, if I can see clearly, the tenth mm-hmm. of April, two thousand and twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Monitoring visit to the administrate of the administrator mm-hmm. of the district assembly to the district. fund to the districts to, to monitor the projects exactly. that have been done with the money in line with section one two nine you, you read that earlier exactly yeah <clears throat> now when this letter went to the district assemblies and mm-hmm. the MD, mmbas and, and and all of that mm-hmm. here's what happened the minister wrote a notice mm-hmm. important notice he titles it mm-hmm. dated the 25th day of april 2000 couple of days after that's right mm-hmm. to all the mmdas let me catch it yeah he says <laughs> that it is hereby directed that uh-huh. no mmdce should participate in any of these meetings. This is serious. I mean... So so this is actually a, a new angle to the discussion. So mm-hmm. actually, the standoff has gone beyond a disagreement over allocation mm-hmm. to now even affecting the Operational. work operationally, mm-hmm. supervising our districts. And this is key because mm-hmm. if the DACF administrator has allocated monies based on a formula to districts, and based on the law, she's supposed to visit the districts to check, to ensure that this project you say you are doing is at 80% completion. Mm-hmm. And the minister is saying no district chief executive should be there. Mm-hmm. It, it means this is, it, it means our local governance is facing challenges. And the DCs, because they are appointed, can't mm-hmm. come out and talk. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like, 
there's but, there's some problem mm -hmm. at, but i have a question on, on yeah it's on a serious that. matter yes i understand the serious nature of it but so I'm, yes yes i'm just thinking mm -hmm. if you want to meet the people who work directly under me mm -hmm. even though you provide the money mm -hmm. to super to check how much to check work progress yes. why do you not make that request through my office or oh, even copy above me. my yes, office guy, the good good question the letter you read 23rd april mm -hmm. At least they should have copied the local government minister. The, no, they should have the asked the local, local the, government minister if, mm -hmm. to convene, to, uh, to the tell... No, Sky's point mm -hmm. is that when you read the law, mm -hmm. the law for the DACF is very clear about her role in monitoring projects. And yes. reporting to parliament. So, so her job is, the money has been allocated. These are the projects being done. We are monitoring, we are visiting mm -hmm. to ensure that the 10,000 we give you is doing the classroom block yes. we said. Mm -hmm. Your point is that Local government minister is the one overseeing these people. Yes. So out At of Ketsi, you could say, dear local government minister, in line with my rule, da 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 da. I'll be doing this. I'm going to visit these districts, da 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 da. So you are right, Ketsi wise. So oh, no. See, no, we are not pinning it on here. Yeah. We are trying to say that there is a breakdown relationship between the two, and it's affecting where. Yes. yes. Hold so on. I'm coming. We understand what you've said. So you don't need to. What you said, we can't explain. No, you see, you are proceeding wrongly. No, no, no. Uh, let me explain why. <laughs> because the minister is quoted, is is copied in this letter. Yeah. So no, the first question was not a copy question. Is what he's saying that if you want to meet people, it's like I want to meet the news editor. Uh -huh. I'm the HR manager. Uh -huh. All right, we are doing some work. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then I I, the news I, do a, I do I do I, I do a, a letter to the various units of the newsroom and say I want to meet them without telling VK. And I'm I'm informing VK, but I'm not involving her in the process. You see that? Is do, 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 what he says is that uh -huh. if somebody is in the minister of local government is the one who is the boss of all the DCs. Mm -hmm. So if a DACF administrator is going to the district to monitor, mm. the local government minister report. should be. You see that? You see the, the information. Is the, copy. the copying. When you are copied something, they are bringing this to your notice. It is not that he is, she should write to the minister so, 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 to get so, so, permission so, to go and meet the district chief. That's it, a different matter. It, it's, okay, so not even permission. I'm talking more about involvement. Okay, you know what? Even, the point is that the relationship is broken down. Yeah, so, it is, so it's even a wishful thing for me to expect her to say, let's go and do it together. Yeah, because In another world, they would have said, I'm the DACF. Uh -huh. A minister, Charlie, we are going to some districts. Can we go together to make yeah, this thing nice? Yeah, yeah, but clearly, because the relationship has broken down, I'm going to burn it everybody's following the law. Yeah. And your, your, your point is that the DACF administrator mm. hasn't broken any law by directly writing to the local DCs. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, Ministry Zakra, the letter was addressed to her, him, the minister. Okay. And then copies sent to the Minister of State and the Deputy Minister. Okay. And I'm saying that the Minister wrote a letter. Do you understand the point? Yeah, I'm making? that the people should not go. Akoto is saying that it should be a request to the Minister. No. That the, the administrator wrote to the Minister for local government. That the people The should. letter was addressed to him. That the people should come. That monitoring uh, visit to so, the... So, so, so she did what you are saying. Do you understand she, what, she what, did what you are saying? You get the point. Yes, we get it. She did what you are saying. So I think, Sky, you have you have you have you have come to a very interesting conclusion that we shouldn't misconstrue what is happening as a DACF administrator who's gone renegade. Mm -hmm. That what she's doing Moral. is grounded on law. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, the local government says letter to the president, even though he quoted some laws, mm -hmm. did not consolidate all the laws to understand properly mm -hmm. the independence of the DACF mm -hmm. and that. His role is not to supervise the DSF administrator. He needs to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. Number three, there is information about the bad blood between the two. Mm -hmm. Evidenced by the letters we've seen, the redraw of the first deputy minister's letter, mm -hmm. and this letter asking the uh, uh, MMDs not to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Now, fine. The question for us and the public is, mm -hmm. so what does this mean for our development at the local level? Because there's, it's nice to talk about fight. Mm -hmm. It's good for media coverage. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have is that mm -hmm. if you have a classroom block, in your project that is not being monitored because mm -hmm. of this fight, mm -hmm. or a chips compound that you want to do that because they have not been monitored, the DC is misbehaving. Mm -hmm. Who do you talk to? I think that's what we should be concerned about. The governance dimensions of this and whether the presidency has resolved the matter. Uh -huh. Because the both of them report to the president. Mm -hmm. The luckily the DACF reports, but in fact, the, the, the law says. Mm -hmm. Any duty as may be assigned by the president. Right. So she has a direct line to the president, mm -hmm. as does the minister. Mm -hmm. So what I would expect was the government or the presidency to say that 
This matter in the media public, this is what the government has resolved to do. We've had a meeting with them. We've resolved the matter. Mm-hmm. Because for this to travel in the news for almost a week mm-hmm. and I haven't heard anything from government as an official government, mm-hmm. information minister or presidency spokesperson, I think it's worrying. Yeah, it because is. it creates an impression of a, it's like there's no control. Mm-hmm. you know. And I think that that's the challenge. Because under other uh, uh, eras, mm-hmm. you can't have this public spot. And this is critical local governance. Mm-hmm. It's not some non-entity coordinators between some units. This is mm-hmm. local government and this assembly common fund. It's very big, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I expect the government to issue a statement of some kind mm-hmm. or to make an announcement or resolve the issue in a way that will give the public comfort mm-hmm. because I can see how this is going to affect delivery of development at a local level mm-hmm. in very significant ways. But I thank you for the I just want you to brought. add some quick information, footnote. Mm-hmm. You see, because of this fight, mm-hmm. you know that the the, the, the District Assembly's Common Fund is in arrears to the tune of over 5 billion Ghana mm-hmm. cities. Mm-hmm. Ideally, ideally, if there was great working relationship between the administrator mm-hmm. and the minister. Mm-hmm. This matter would take center stage every Thursday when cabinet seats to discuss matters having to do with the administration of this nation. So that the finance minister will be pressed at that meeting to ensure that the funds are released. Mm-hmm. Of course, the administrator doesn't go to cabinet. Yeah, but if you, it if is you, the minister. If you involve your minister. Oh, you, no. <laughs> it is the minister who goes to uh, pa- so now, cabinet. Now they know that I go no, to no, cabinet. You see, no, no, no. You see, the point is that <laughs> you and I, uh, our district are suffering. Do you know that the 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 Ketu South? That's why we should work together. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Maybe you say you have power. Ketu, Ketu South. Ketu South. Ketu South. <laughs> when we were hit by tidal yeah. waves. No, let me make this point. When we were hit by flood waters, yes. people abandoning their homes, yes. their homes collapsing, yes. their homes getting submerged, yes. people becoming hungry, yes. people becoming unwell. Not a single yes. item. The member of parliament yes. was telling me yesterday. Yes, we know all that. No, I'm, hold on. I'm, let me make that point, you, Bernard. I'm, I'm let me, you, Bernard, you, you have just stridently explained that the DACF people are on course. And now you are telling me that the, the, the DACF is in areas and that the minister is in cabinet. Bernard, you see, I am making this point because, look, I am here as a son of the Ketu South. No, as a citizen of Ghana. Wait. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm a son of the Ketu yeah. South constituency yeah. first. So. Because that's, you know, that is my constituency. That is where I come from. I feel my mature man. So I have to make that point. The people are struggling. Yesterday, the member of parliament saw me in parliament. Yeah. She was almost we- weeping. That since we did that interview and yeah. promises were made yeah. that we were going to bring items to yeah, them right. the, to support the people, not a single item came. Mm-hmm. At least that was the impression she created. This, you are tracing this the delay in the release of. And money. I'm saying that if the system was working properly, the minister and the administrator were, you know, if the, there yeah. was cooperation, yeah. some of these issues can easily be addressed. So that using the reserve fund. Yeah. Something can be gotten for the people of, of, of my constituency. All right. And I'm making the point that, look, the money is for all of us. There should not be a fight over it as to who gets to distribute it, who, can, who does not yeah. get to share it. It is important that they work together. The minister must respect the independence do you know of how the much, office. Do you know how much the DACF owes MMDAs? It would be good to know. It will help I us as well. I don't have that uh-huh. Because you see, mm. I, I'm, for me, you've explained what you have, and I'm happy you said based on information I have. Mm. Because I'm very sure after this show, people send you more information, other oh. letters will be sent. But for, for, so, on the face of what you oh. have, yeah. I'll leave it here. I want to move to something else. But you I'm, should also talk about Ketu South because it's a serial, it, it matters a lot to me. It ma- no, no, Bernard. You see, yeah, I understand to you. see a whole member of parliament almost on her knees. Guy, I get you. I interviewed. It's, I, I interviewed Abdulajifa Gumashi. No, but I'm telling you, I'm giving you an update, and I'm saying and that you are, you are tracing it to this impasse. I'm saying that look, if the government is failing to intervene, ideally, yeah, we could easily go to the district assembly's common fund administrator and say, oh, there's a contingency situation here. Oh, yeah. The people are struggling. Yeah, they have lost their homes. Yeah. People are sick. Yeah. People have lost their property. Yeah. So can you go into the reserve fund, which is approved by parliament yeah. and is within the bosom of the administrator yeah. so that we can raise something from there to so, support the people. So has, has the MP done that? 
as in what? Has the MP appealed to the DSCF? She's made all kinds of appeals, but I don't know about the DSCF. I think at this point we have to take that one up. Yeah, because See, if that's possible, that we is, can do that. that is the point. I okay, but no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, yeah, go on, go on, no, go on. No, on. I wanted to hold a bit of a contrary view. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and say that in listening to all this, I have a few, a few things are running through my mind. Mm -hmm. I need to check why we needed a DACF in the first place and why the law set it up to insulate it from the local government ministry. Because I have met my MC, for instance, several times, mm -hmm. and he has complained about the lack of access to funding exactly. to do things that he needs to do. Every time I meet George Bray, That's what I he's saying. asking Godfrey, a lot, when can I get money to work? He's not the only one. Okay, a lot of the MCs, DCs are complaining. And they say the money too is not a it's lot. In so, my question is, would this matter mm -hmm. not be better resolved if the funds were in the bosom of the people who are closer to the ground and can determine that the needs are here, here, and here? Because I've seen, for instance, the formula and how the location is. And give me your letter. I want to, Which of them? I can, I can give you. The one with the, the last but one page. The one with the numbers. So the your point is that I mean, but what you are raising is I've, I've been, I'm more fundamental. Because yeah, yeah, I'm just saying the, because don't forget there's also get fund administrator. There, no, the, the reason it's not fundamental. You see, the reason being that this scenario we have is quite common. Mm -hmm. We see it in amongst boards and CEOs a lot, a lot. So when we leave such situations to personal idiosyncrasies yeah. and development struggles, all I'm saying is. The solution might be simply let the supervising institution find its way and lead. Because yeah, in, yeah. in the end, yeah. hold on. undermine constitutional independence no, that, no, created by the framers of the constitution. No, the reason why, which is why I asked, yeah. we do not, I do not know why the DACF is insulated. Perhaps there's a good reason why. Why it so, 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 I am so, thinking, yeah. I am just I am just I'm just mulling. Yeah. Over things, I am saying, would it not make sense for them to, to say, let the local government ministry administer funds to the people, mm. to the assemblies that they know that they run? I, I, that have I, I, th I think that that point is too big for this show because I know, and I'm just thinking. They're, they're thinking I mean, around I setting thought, up a this assembly common fund thoughts. is possibly in, in line with public financial management and best practice. <coughs> All right, so if you have a fund, there must be an administrator with a certain qualification. Mm -hmm. And he must be accountable to parliament mm -hmm. because sometimes when you have a political head running a ministry with all the things they have to do, mm -hmm. also managing the finance, mm -hmm. it may be a problem. So okay. I think that one is very clear. That is why they set it up. The, my challenge is the, the, the points you are trying to make. In, you see, there's a difference between legally separating powers and mm -hmm. collaboration. Yeah, so for, for I'm, example, I'm, 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 I'm coming. You, know, you are not the one who teach me English, please. I'm saying that. No, I'm not seeking yeah, to take your time. English. Isn't there a difference between what parliament and executive does? Yes. But for the interest of the country, they have to collaborate. Yes. So, I'm, me, I'm me, for so, that. So, so, no. So, what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that the fact that the DACF is protected mm -hmm. does not mean she should not collaborate with the minister. No. I That's what I'm but saying. See, and, I and read to you. Take your time. Like, you, you know, Sky, I made you speak for like 10 minutes. I'm trying to make a point. Okay, go ahead. I am saying that the example you just pointed about. Mm -hmm the delay in the release of funds mm -hmm. and the fact that the local government minister is in cabinet. And I said in just that, well, if you are not on talking terms with your minister, how do you expect him to fight in your corner? And I'm trying to say that that suggests that when you put everything together, yes, there's independence, but you have to work together because you're on the same side. If it's, it's like the get fund administrator and the minister of education, mm -hmm. There's a need to have a good working relationship because it helps in good governance. Yeah, so in maintaining, I know, ah, I'm saying in maintaining, ah, why, you, why would you allow me? I'm saying ah, in maintaining your independence, uh -huh. ah, can't you work and chew gum at the same time? Can't you be independent from somebody but still work with the person? Does independence mean that when you and I have a same problem, you can't go and Bernard, make the same see, appeal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are you constraining what I'm saying to mean I'm saying that the woman should be controlled by the minister? Bernard, That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I am saying that mm -hmm. it is in the interest of all of us, including uh -huh. the Ketu South we are talking about. Uh -huh. If the minister and the this assembly common fund administrator mm -hmm. are working collaboratively. I agree with you and I said that. And so that's so that, so why you don't have to no, say anything again. <laughs> no, no. You said that. No, no. Okay, my my problem, <laughs> and let me make this point before you go. My problem is with 
the thinking that we need to have the minister provide leadership in that space. Now, one of the reasons why the minister was complaining was that a dip, uh, what do you call it, a member of the committee, right, who is from the minority side, has been given one million Ghana CDs, mm -hmm. which every member of the committee has received anyway, to the best of my understanding, including him, the minister, when he, the minister, when he was in opposition those days, and and also in parliament, he benefited from the, his district. Oh, yeah, the president. As, as MP. The information that I have yeah. is that he benefited from allocations that came in from the district assembly. As Commission. MP. As MP and then also lobbying for for, for allocations from yeah. uh, what do you call it, the reserve, whatever it is. Yeah. That's that's my info. Yes. At least my form information. Yes, for, for, for their district yeah, or their constituents. Right. You understand? Yes. So it is not something new that is happening. So yeah. if an opposition member of parliament yeah. who is a citizen of Ghana yeah. voted to represent the people of BIA East, yeah. goes to the district assembly's common fund, lobbies the, the administrator, yeah. and gets an allocation made to him. Which allocation hasn't even been released yet because the fund is in arrears, and then you take issue with that. Bernard, what I'm saying is that I'm not sure that's the only reason. But which is, is why what, I said that see, is what is in the public domain. Yeah, but the letter you read had more broad issues. So this example is one. But I'm saying that there were other. So you see, if you if you you are the lawyer, if you skew the debate to the whole the man's whole problem is because one NDC person got it. It colors the debate no, no, in an, no, in an no, unfair way. You see, you're I'm not saying. looking at the issue in the round. I'm raising the issue because he says that we should give the No, but the, as that point has been dismissed. That that point is no, that's not standing. That okay. point has not even been tabled well. properly. So, so I'm just saying so that, that, that point you those are the dangers you have if you have a partisan person yeah. leading the ministry and deciding who gets what. Fair enough. The framers of the constitution wanted, with the greatest respect, to insulate the district assemblies. But the person was how, appointed by the president anyway. So, okay, what if you have a partisan DACF administrator mm -hmm. and a non-partisan minister? Then what do you do? Which so, one? like, like the fact that you see, you see, what I'm saying that in Ghana this is a problem. Mm -hmm. The people occupying the positions define the position. That's another challenge. So, for example, you appoint former ministers and Akufo mm -hmm. as board what chairman is, yeah. of state agencies. Mm -hmm. The person who is the CEO is seen as you were deputy minister when Kufo was there. Mm -hmm. CEO wants to do something. Then board chairman said, Baby, minister <laughs> wants to do something. So, the, the, you see, if you make political appointments based on, oh, this person has been loyal, is bad. That's, you see, because you have to look at all those power relationships. Because if you appoint somebody who used to be my boss as my board chair, and I am supposed to take an action and every week he has to come to the office, he wants to sit in my office and set up an office. In, in which organization do you have a board chairman having an office? And I'm moving away from this point. I'm making a general point. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that political appointments sometimes don't use best HR practice. They use <laughs> political expediency, loyalty, and all those things. Because yeah. if you are appointing people to run an institution, you must look at all these dynamics. Mm -hmm. But th the reason that we are struggling like this is that some people, they are just waiting to come to office so that they can just be made a board chair and then they will be frustrated people, which is some of the things, and a lot of it is also people personalize the position. So, Ego. you know, and it's not, we don't need this. So the key to solve problem is just one manifestation. There are many, many districts as well. So I'm going back to the original point. Mm. I think the presidency has to resolve this in the way that brings confidence mm. to local governors, because mm. I'm also told that mm. this standoff could even be affecting project finance for some districts, mm -hmm. because if donors want to give money, mm -hmm. They need certain things to see before they bring the money. Yeah. This standoff will make them hold off and say, let's wait and see what's happening. And it's not going to help anybody. So I'm not sure we, we want this type of thing to continue. We need the, the presidency to, to deal with this matter.